Uh oh, y'all know what it is. It's going down. Yours truly, your big dog, Go DJ Star, holding it down. HSEN Tees, aka Headline Star, like Entertainment Breeze. So that mean my business straight, my bitch is straight. Benji Banks, your bitch is stay on my Twitter page. 2019 Harvard University Global Catalyst Humanitarian Award recipient. You isn't just a leader on the field. But a champion off of it, as he and his wife, Michelle, are co-founders of the Hugh Jackson Foundation, which is committed to empowering children, teens, and adults through awareness, education, and the prevention of human trafficking while assisting survivors and their families in their journey through recovery and survivorship. It is with great pleasure that we stand here today to announce the 14th head coach in the Grambling State University football program, Coach Hugh Jackson. Join me in welcoming Coach Jackson to the stage. For his vision and passion for Grambling State University. His commitment to leadership in this community are without question. And I am honored to be working with him as we advance the mission of this great institution to transcend barriers. I also want to thank Dr. Scott. Well, 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 if you did was counting, I said, well, seven times, Mo added the eighth, and then I said it again, that makes nine, so we'll go ahead and make it well for the 10th time. Mo, Grambling State University has a new head coach. Yes. And his name is Hugh Jackson. Correct. The former head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, the yeah. former offensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, also, he was head coach of the Oakland Raiders, but never got the shot to finish because Al Davis fired him for Lane Kiffin. I just want to point that out. Mm -hmm. And he has worked with quarterbacks from Baker May Mayfield, Carson Palmer. Uh, who was the quarterback in Oakland at that time? He worked at USC? Was it USC? I, I, I ain't really worried about the co college. But, you know, as of most recently, he was at Tennessee State, I think. I was about to go there, but I'm trying to think of the quarterback on the Oakland Raiders at the time. I cannot think of it. It wasn't, it was, it was after Jamarcus Russell. Um, I mean, I mean uh, <laughs> I'm can't, bad. Oh, I can't think of it. Anyways, that's the time the Oakland Raiders on the way, but he was also the offensive coordinator at Tennessee State in turn the former quarterback from Grambling State University to a second team OVC, uh, put him in the second game. And that dude, I think he threw over 3,000 some yards, three interceptions. Mm -hmm. Mo, how do you feel about Hugh Jackson? Um, I think that he was a great selection. Um, he's hit the ground running as far as recruiting. Mm -hmm. He got announced <laughs> that morning and already recruiting by that afternoon. So, and it looks like he plans to quickly even the playing field as for his early signing day. I think that um, if he can secure those people that he's been recruiting or make an offer to, Gremlins early recruiting or well, early signing class has potential to be um, great, but I do have one small correction. Everyone keeps saying the fourteenth coach. What fourteen come from? Yeah, I was trying to figure that out too. Because Eddie, Eddie Robs was one. Coach Rob, no, then no, it was Doug, then it was then Spears, Spears, then Doug. Then, no, not Doug. Doug, Doug came back. Well, no, it was Brock, no. No, no. Brock, no. It was Broadway after Spears. Yeah, it was Broadway. 
Then it was Doug again. Then it was then, Pops. Then it was Pops. And now it's Hugh Jackson. So that's seven. Yeah, I was one of that too. Like, uh, Unless I found those interims as head coach, but I'm like, that don't really count. Like, how, it wasn't that many interims. Oh, uh, that 13th season. It, after Doug, it was, it was quite a few. Yeah, but uh, you, they're not technically head coaches. They was right. They're just interim. They're holding. The but eight. it was on. It was only two interims. That season with Doug, wasn't it? Because it was old boy, and that dude looked like a whiner. Uh, the runners back coach. <laughs> he looked like a whiner. I seen him. I seen him in the cab. I like. I, I know that dude got a bottle in his office. And there was the other dude. Uh, it was the, the the D coordinator, I think. Um, Coach Bill's husband didn't become interim at some point. No, when Doug fired, when Doug got fired, he got fired. Okay, that's but, why, and I mean I don't mean to stop you, but that's why I know it was somebody. Uh, that's why Coach Bill. I remember that when that happened, Coach Bill didn't talk to nobody. But yeah, when they kept saying fourteen, it's been on the graphics. It's been online. In articles, they keep saying 14th. And I went back and looked at the 2018 media guy. There's only been, including Jackson, there's only been seven coaches, head coaches for Grambling State football. Coach Rob didn't stop coaching until like 97, 98. I, no. 97, I think. Well, anyways, Hugh Jackson is our head coach at Graham State University. We'll get to that. Uh, we're going to first talk about this week uh, picks and this look like it's going to be uh, a celebration at the Celebration Bowl because I don't know if you heard, that okay. bad boy done sold out. Yeah. Um, when they first put the tickets on sale, the bottom level went at and sold out immediately. It's finna be so much blue in that stadium. South Carolina State ain't got a shot. You want to know what's funny to me? The fact that out this stadium. Look, look, look. Prime deserve whatever they, whatever he get. The stuff that he's doing, it's not even an effect in Jackson State. It is affecting all HBCUs because mm -hmm. you telling me that the Celebration Bowl is going to have more people at it than maybe a beast, uh, 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 a New Year's Six Bowl? Because mm -hmm. I guarantee you, the Peach Bowl is not going to sell out with Michigan State and whoever they play. When your AD at Jackson State issues a challenge to Jackson State alums, family, friends, and say we want to sell 48,000 tickets. The Sugar Bowl is not going to sell out. The Fiesta Bowl, it's not going to sell out. The Rose but, Bowl might sell out. Yeah, Rose Bowl, yes, maybe. But when you think about the tickets generally going to sell when the bowl games are announced, right? At the point that the celebration tickets, well, celebration bowl tickets went on sale, within a couple of days, the bottom section has sold out. And within a week, there are no more tickets. But these other bowl games, they still are selling tickets. What's that bowl uh, in, um, in uh, 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 not, 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 it's not the Peach Bowl. I said that one. Uh, oh, the Cotton Bowl going to sell out because that's part of the playoff game. I forgot. Yeah, the Cotton the cop Bowl is going to sell out because that's Alabama and Cincinnati. Yeah, you know, Bama going to bring their people. Yeah. I think the Celebration, yeah. celebration Bowl is going to be a top five uh, bowl game this season. Before they I, I'm, brought, ta I'm talking about ticket sales, uh, not game. Bama was in the championship, and this is one time I was actually catching a bus back to Grambling. Don't ask what happened. But I was on the bus, right? And I get on there and it's like full. These fans from Bama were on the bus coming from Alabama on Grand. They already had the eye black on. They already had their Bama gear. They were literally taking the bus to California when Bama played out there. I was like, 
Y'all go, that's why they was already dressed. Uh, they had a few more days of ride. Yeah, yeah. By the time they get it, it's time to go to the game. Yeah. So, so Prime, you deserve it, my dude. Whatever, whatever. Uh, congratulations for winning the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year Award. Mm-hmm. So, well, I got to ask, Mo. And his son got the Jerry Rice Award, I think. Yeah, he did, too. Yeah, he did. I saw that, too. I think that uh, was the first time that a play, an athlete or a player from HBCU got the award in some years. Or if it was if, – if it has ever went to an athlete from an HBCU, I'm not sure. But if it had, it's been a while. Yeah. That says a lot. Celebration Bowl, Atlanta, Georgia. I think the game is at 1 p.m., maybe 2, maybe 3 or 4. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to watch it, just in fact, because I just want to see what they're going to talk about. But there is a football game going to get played. Mm-hmm. It's between Jackson State and South Carolina State University. Jackson State coming in, SWAT champions, uh, one loss to ULM. You got South Carolina State coming in, 6-5. and five. Uh, the, one, the Most of their six was in the MEAC. Mo, well, let me say uh, who's Zo. Well, I say Zo pick last, but Celebration Bowl, who's walking away with it? Swack or the Miat? I mean, I am Swack, so I'm going Jackson State all day. Coach Prime. Coach Prime, it is. Coach Prime, it is. Zo decided Coach Prime, too. So we all go. It's a Swack love this week in the Celebration Bowl. Wish nothing but. Uh, res- uh, uh, well, wishing up but respect to Jackson State. And I'm really just showing much love to Coach Prime for what he did for HBCUs this season. That's really big. Uh, but there's a lot more news than that because I don't know if you noticed, Alabama and them been in that transfer portal. I just want to point that out. And who? The transfer portal. Mm. They got the, uh, the former quarterback from Miami to transfer to them. They mm-hmm. also got another DB from – no, no, they got a linebacker from a- a- Appalachian State, and I think they got a DB from Arkansas State. So they've been really hitting that transfer portal. So, I mean, they make moves. Yeah. So um, I'm going to just say this, and we're going to jump straight into Hugh Jackson. I think the swag is going to be so competitive. It has to be. Um, everybody, I think everybody's trying to get their little 15 minutes of fame because I don't know if you saw it, but you know, they literally did an article in an interview, ULM's coach. Mm-mm, tell me, talk, talk about it. We own it. So basically the coach was interviewed on, because they're the only one who Jackson State lost to right. in the fall. And it was like, how you able to do it? He was like, that was the tough, he was like, I've played plenty of HBCUs, that was one of the best that I've ever faced. And so he was like, don't give up the big plays and this, that, and the other. First and foremost, Jackson State lost that game on their own. It's not that you outplayed them or outmaneuvered them. It was yeah. Jackson State outcoached themselves, and they that's couldn't. how they lost their game. They couldn't, they couldn't, like the defense held them boys. Them boys could not put points on the board. All they needed was one touchdown. And that mm-hmm. was all she wrote. And it had been an undefeated season for that man, first season. But I was just like, what was the purpose of going and doing this interview? Ah, uh, you know, I got to get you, Sean. You did beat Jackson State. Right now, that's that's a big deal. That's, that's, a, big deal. that's a big deal. But once again, HBCUs, Southern got a new coach. That is true. So, uh, Dooley decided to leave PV. Huh? Didn't Prairie View pick their coach? We're going to talk about that. Okay. So, Dooley leaves PV to go to Southern. Mm -hmm. Uh, My opinion, I don't see what the big deal was. Uh, He had one good season, and that was this year. I don't see what – I don't see the big uh, hoop all about Dooley. Anything from him? He's an excellent coach. Um. He did have a great campaign at Prairie View. No, he wasn't able to win the championship. But look who lined up against him. Um, Honestly, he left Grambling, and let's look at what our offense did after. 
Well, I mean, yeah, that, that you can speak Vonda, but I just uh I didn't see what the big hoopla was to be in a well, I didn't, for this man. He didn't war for him because I wouldn't have got into a beating war for him. Nah, as soon as the first bid came out, oh, y'all can have him. You can have him. We'll go with somebody else. That so, was no all of that. Yeah. Now, Prairie View, supposedly they bring in Kevin Southern for an interview, not the coach. He's um, that's well, what I saw on Facebook today. So right now, I think technically it should be him, period, unless mm -hmm. you got a bigger name. Because that's what everybody's shooting for. But, I mean, well, that's what everybody wanted Grambler to shoot for, but we just needed a coach. Mm -hmm. So well, we need a coach. We need the coach. We need someone that's about to rebuild. Yes. Because right now it's like we're in a house that's been torn down and we still got a strong foundation. Yes, that's the thing. Got to be able to rebuild on that foundation and just any old person wasn't going to do. And like I've been consistently saying, the person has to come in and understand the grambling system. So this is my thing on Hugh Jackson. I already said the quarterback situation is going to be better. Mm-hmm. Our offense is going to be way better than it was this season. Mm -hmm. Now, the first two games, I'll give I'll give him the bumps. By the time we get to Dallas, mm -hmm. I think we're going to be moving. Now, the question is, because I didn't have no problem with our defensive coordinator, is he going to keep him? And if he do, is he going to make him get out of that 3-3-5? I don't think that he's going to keep anybody. Well, I mean, I'm just that that's my biggest thing. Because I already in my head, the offense is going to be I mean, better. I don't that the D.C. did a bad job. Not, not a bit. Not like we bit. said, if you're on the field, if your defense is on the field 75% of the time, those kids are tired. I don't care how much conditioning you do, they're still going to get tired because it's a whole lot. Like people say, practice that you're going to perform. I can do that. But at the same time, you're talking about full helmets, the pressures of the crowd, the pressures of you going up against, you're in a real game. You're not going up against your own teammates because right. even if you're going up against your teammates on defense, yeah, I'm sticking, but I know that I still can't injure my teammate. No. So lined yeah. up against an actual opponent, they not pulling their own um, hits. No. And plus, you got to realize, I mean, it's you, you're doing it for conditioning. Going up in a game, now you gotta, you're not just running up and down the field. You're moving side to side. You gotta make tackles. You gotta get up. You gotta get in huddle. It's just a lot. So we'll see what he do with the D, with, with that defensive coordinator position. I don't think he should fire him. I still think he should, he should retain him. Just say, hey, let go of that three three five unless you're finna go get these SEC type of players. The only thing is that athletics generally new head coach come in, he hire his full staff. Well, let me throw this out there because I know uh, Urban Meyer been a thrown under the bus, but when he got to Florida, he did keep um, uh, what's my man named the, the uh, Charlie Strong as a defensive coordinator. I was trying to figure out what was the purpose of them doing an article saying Gremlin had offered the job to someone else prior to offering it to Hugh. It was nobody else. It was just from what I heard, he had another Gallo had another interview that morning with Ray Lewis. That I'm not not Friday Thursday morning. And what is whatever Ray wanted, Gallo wasn't going to give him. Mm. And that's why Hugh got pronounced. Hugh was already in the league. Like he was lined up to be. No, no, I wasn't talking about Ray. Whoa. It was an article that was released. I've seen it a couple of times that said it was, I want to say the guys at Miami or something. Oh, Ed Reed. Said that it was offered to him first. And he said it wasn't a good move for his family at the time. And he's in the middle of some stuff. You know, they just got a new, I think, AD and coaching stuff down there. So he was like, it's at a pivotal point for Miami and he needed to be there. To I, don't think he, I don't think he wanted to come to me. I, I, you know what? I really think he thought he had a shot to be the head coach of Miami. Uh -huh. I think he I, thought he was Miami. And I'll be honest with you. He should have been the head coach. Mm -hmm. I totally let me, agree. And let me say this too. Florida State of Miami, your head coach is in Jackson, Mississippi. Let me shut up before it cut off again. Yeah, we don't need you to cut off again. Me and Zoe, Zoe not on here. Get well soon, Zoe. But Zoe's not on here. So then this is going to leave me looking like. I mean, Mo, you're going to have to run the show then. But we ain't going to 
We ain't going there, there. At Zone Picks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think the SWAT going to be the most competitive it probably ever been since the late 70s, early 80s. It's going to get interesting. I think that um, I'm excited for it because it's time. I'm tired of us being the Chitlin Circuit. Prime, prime open up. My, my, my next thing is, if the SWAC do all this, I wonder what the MEAC doing. Because all, all, the, all the focus on the SWAC. It's nothing oh. on the MEAC. Oh. And that is more take on the MEAC. And we're going to keep it moving. So. I mean, they people been escaping like the people off the Titanic. It's nothing over there. Like their commissioner came out and said they're not going to, you know, close the MEAC or, you know, end it. But what are you doing? How are you recruiting other schools? Your schools are leaving. You're not replacing them. They got, I, I mean, I only, it's only one other thing they could do. They have to join the, the CIAA and bring them schools up to D1 potential. But they can't join CIAA. That's D2. I know. What you want to do? And I think I was taught early on in athletics, you can't mix D1, D2 as far as like conference wise. What you going to do? You going to keep, y'all going to keep y'all little conference around? I, I, say, gotta... you, I think that they need to look into doing a bowl game for between the CIAA and the SIAC. We shall see, Mo. I must say, there's two historical HBCU conferences. Right now, the C well, to me, the CIAA always been bigger than the MEAC to me. Yeah, I mean, the CIAA basketball tournament alone, it's is like big. It's, yeah, like MEAC try, but it's nothing. You it's nothing you can compare to that CIAA basketball tournament weekend. We can't compare to a final basketball. Nope. Like it, the only thing that come close to the CIAA tournament is March Madness. This is a party. It's a family reunion. Like, bro, it is real. I, I always, I, I gotta go. Every time I go, I was with a, I wanted to go. I was with a, I was with a basketball team. When I mean a basketball team, I'm talking about somewhere doing basketball, either with college or pro. So you couldn't enjoy. I, it. I, I never been to the. I never been to Mardi Gras. You know why? I was always with a basketball team. Yeah, Mardi Gras is usually doing. Yeah. When you're right, you're right. So. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, I don't know what them, I don't know what South Carolina State, Norfolk, uh, Howard, Hampton, um, Morgan State, Delaware State, Coppin State, uh, who else is over there? Um, nobody in Florida, nobody in Georgia, uh, South Carolina State. I'm about to say they can't come North, to us. North Carolina Central. Why? I mean, why not? Why not just bring them over and you have a real east and west? And uh, have to play central locations, though. I mean, depends on what, you, what kind of money you bring. Do you really think some of our schools, like the Alabama schools, it's a distance for them to go from the Alabama to play in Houston? Let's think about it. Morgan State, ain't that in Baltimore? I'm looking at it from an SEC point of view. If you got to, if maybe the budgets can get a little bit bigger because you got, I know what I'm saying. If, if, if that can happen, the money will have to go up because first of all, the money that it will generate would be huge. Mm -hmm. Only thing, only school I would have a problem with, it would be Delaware State. Because you know how a soccer team is in the sweat. Yeah, and, and it's proven it can be done. So originally when they first joined, they were playing um, their home soccer games in like Alabama or something like that. Then it got to the point where it was just like helping people budget wise to make the trip to DC. Now I think it's gotten to the point where the schools know to budget it in to where they can make the trip. And you know why? It's a good recruiting tool too. That's a big market in DC. Just so it merge, who do you play in the celebration ball? You make the Celebration Bowl the conference championship. I can see that. You 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 just get rid of it. Like you you literally 
you you uh no i'll take that yeah no i usually make the celebration bro the conference cha- championship like literally make it the conference championship because you still got the bayou classic that ain't finna move for nobody we already proved that point no nah, this time yeah so you literally make it or you just i mean you can do it east and west or the best two 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 teams like the Big 12 do. I can see that. So I think in making it a conference championship would be the best thing because that's it's in Atlanta. Bro, you telling me Grambling going to Howard, Howard coming to Grambling, Morgan State playing Grambling again. Hey, how about we go meet in New York like we did the first time? Or better yet, bouncing around. Go to the shy, cause our HBCU alums are deep. I'm telling you, Chicago, all that, like it's it's. I'm about to say they could break it to St. Louis. The stadium that the Rams used to use is still there. It's not being used. I just I think the budget in it, cause I think they still have people to go in and maintain it. Bro, listen, it's, it's, I mean, Mo, you saying a lot, and it should be done, and I hope it get to that point where you look at it from that landscape where, hell, even the basketball tournament, you can move that anywhere. Like, what what if, you, what if they decide we're going to have the basketball tournament in D.C.? All them schools there, you will literally, you, you might not be able to get to the CIAA level, but give yourself five years, the money that it's going to generate in Washington, D.C., I'm about to say in actuality, I think that it could get to that level because you think about it. Being in D.C., Howard is right there. Like. You play at the, what, what are uh, the Capitol One building with the Washington Wizards? Like, it's it's potential. I, I You know what? I'm going to send this to HBCU game day because they need to be talking about this shit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's big right there. But we're going to keep it moving. We're going to go to these uh, picks. We ain't going to stay long. Um, we right. gonna, yeah, because it's, I mean, I'm mean, honest with you, we don't open up a whole can of worms with that shit. I mean, we have, but the thing is, it's stuff that needs to be talked about. It's so many ways that we can improve our markability, what we're doing, but people don't want to have those conversations because we become so complacent and all every time you come up with an idea, oh, that's not going to work. Yes, Why isn't it going to work? work. It will work. You telling me there's an opportunity for Southern to play Howard. And Howard is the key factor. You don't think if we did some shit like that, North Carolina a t wouldn't switch back? Or better yet, somebody need to host a HBCU like tournament. Like, I mean, like real HBCU tournament in a great pick, great location. I'm, I'm thinking basketball now. Because right now, in the non-conference season, honest to God, I'm so sick of our teams going out here. I understand that money-wise, we need to go because we need the money for the budgets. But damn, give them kids a chance to play. The, the only, oh. only thing I, I would do, I would do an eight-man tournament. Um, I would do it during Christmas. Um, I would host it in Atlanta. I would bring in four teams from east of the Mississippi and four teams from the sweat. Or well, four teams from the west. And I and I ain't talking about like the big schools. I'll even go get somebody like, I don't know, a, a, what, is, what school you at? Harriet State Harris. Stone? Harris I, would bring it, I would bring in them. I would bring in the top schools in the NIAA, uh, N, NI, uh, what is the NIAA? NIA? NAIA. You got NAIA. it. Bring in them, you could bring in somebody from Division Two. It's like different ways that that can be done because depending on the schools that you bring in, their people are going to come. And that basketball season has already started. That could be something that could have been leading up to the celebration bowl. So you're hitting two different demographics. You're hitting basketball and you're capping it off with football. It's kind of like a transitioning thing. Basketball the, and football is going out. If I'm the SWAT commissioner, I am literally on the phone with the MIA and say, hey, let's make this happen. Y'all got to come to the SWAC. The SWAC ain't going to the MIA. We got everything over here. Y'all need us. Come over here. 
Let's figure out this budget. Let's see can we get some more money and get this thing moving because your biggest in twenty. We ain't losing people. Y'all instead of losing our people, we the here. Big, the biggest thing is going to figure out what to do with Delaware State because I think that's the only school would be out the way. They would have to play theirs at a neutral location. Like that would be the only thing. I, I, and no, me personally, I would want them schools to go there just to help them out. But you that's just have to figure it out. Like we would have to make plans. Like the thing is. That will come down to the commissioner. If you're going to make this work, you need to uh, make deals with the airlines. Okay, I understand this is what y'all usually charge, but you stand to make more money if I can get exclusive contracts for my teams within the conference to fly to these different locations to where it will work with our but with the school's budgets and stuff like that. Yeah, it's way different. done. When we went to Chicago for when Vander went to Chicago, each time we played, I forgot the Windy City Classic. Each time we went, granted they flew us up, but we charted flights. Mm, powering off. Yeah. I it, it was just you could get a deals with a hotel chain say, hey, I swear school's only gonna say yo school, talk to some of these local restaurants about. Uh, sponsoring meals, we could blast y'all, promote. There's so many ways to do it. Mo, I think we don't open up a can of worms. You need to send the show to the commission. I, you think I ain't? Because <laughs> I know, like, even here, when the opponents come and they have to stay overnight, we have, like, a, not really, like, a, not really a whole partnership or whatever, but we have this thing worked out where, with the Missouri Athletic Club, where the teams coming in and get discounts on their rooms. So you telling me that we can do that here, but an entire conference? You bringing business to them people, steady people coming in, people still making money, people still getting paid. Like it's a, it's a, it, we open up a can of worms. We don't have more than one home game. So the hotel, you can afford to give a discount to these teams because guess what? You're talking about each time that they come in. If one team is hearing from another, hey, this is where we stayed at. It was real cool. We had the meeting rooms. We had this, that, and the third. These are the amenities and whatever they gave for us. Stay here. You get you stand to make a whole lot of money this season. More time we open up a can of words, baby. I really do. I really do. I I I think I see the future. So hey, we need to. Um, put a pin in this show right here so when it happens, we can say oh, we oh, said what you think I ain't <laughs> what, what today is December 14, 2021, 11.02 we talked about the SWAC the MEAC forcing the SWAC I mean, the SWAC forcing the MEAC to be part of and the only school we worried about because of the distance is Delaware State. That is true Alright, we're going to the picks We're going to the picks so uh we ain't gonna we ain't gonna pick all of. We're gonna pick a couple games. You already know we're gonna always pick the top five. You already know one game is gonna. Well, you already know three games we're gonna do. So let me choose two. So I'm gonna go to uh, these two. So um, we got Packers versus the Ravens. Uh, Zoe is taking the Packers. I'm taking the Ravens to bounce back and get uh, suited up and booted for the playoffs. I picked the Packers. I'm by myself in this one. I'm the only one believing your My brother. My brother's going to kill me, but his right is just... I'm the only one who believes in your brother. I'm he can't say nothing. One. I'm the only one who believes in your brother. All right. Uh, I think this might be a good game because of the way the Rams have been playing, coming off the win off Monday Night Football. And you got the Seahawks right now on the three-game winning streak. But we got Sierra... Versus the ram in the bush. Uh, Zoe is going with the ram in the bush. I went with the ram in the bush. I'm going to take the ram in the bush too. So, yeah. All right. Tough week for us. Tough week for us. Let me say this because it's about my Jaguars and I always get I get the flow. Hey, uh, Shah Khan, you, we got option A. And we got option B. Option A. You fire your Urban Myers and you look at three coaches to be the head coach of the Jaguars. First coach, 
Eric the Enemy. Got to give him a shot. Second, Byron Leftwich. Please do. And the third one, it's a long shot, but I think he'd be a great head coach. Phillip Rivers. Mm-hmm. Or option B, you keep Uh-oh. Urban Myers. You put him on a flight to New York and you sit him down with Michael Strahan and you have him put some sense into this, man. I it's thought funny. you were going to say out of space, my bad. No, not, not out of space. I wouldn't do that. He he got to pay him too much money. But you sit him down with Michael Strahan and, and, and put some sense in Because remember, uh, Tom Coughlin was on that BS. And Michael Strahan sat him down like, hey, bro, you need to do this and that. He did that and that two for Super Bowl championships. So with that being said, Jaguars versus the Texans. Um, I'm going to just say everybody going for the Jaguars. I'm so appreciative. I'm so happy. I'm about to say, I wanted to say Jack was three the hard way. Thank you, mate. Three the hard way, Mo. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Sunday night. Tampa Bay versus the Saints. I don't need nothing. I don't need nothing to find this one. Tampa Bay. I, I picked the Buccaneers. You damn right you did. Well, who did Zoe pick? He picked the Buccaneers too. Three the hard way. Ain't nobody rolling with the Saints. And we <laughs> move on to a Sunday game. Boy, are y'all rolling right now? Them boys. Versus the midgets. Versus the Big Apple. I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> you can say that. They your rival. <laughs> Uh, I think I can say this with uh, full confidence. Three the hard way. Yes, absolutely. Three the hard way. Cowboys over the Giants. Uh, yeah. So those are our picks. The rest of the picks. I'm still trying to figure out how to get them on the screen for all our people watching it. It's uh, I'm trying to figure out something with this app. I'm gonna figure this out while I have the picks rolling. Uh, I thought I had something, but it was just too much work. And I say, you know what? I'm too lazy for that. But I'm going to do better. I'm going to get better. I'm going to do better. So, uh, final thoughts. Mo, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Um, my final thoughts is, you know, proud of Dallas. That game got a little bit too close <laughs> this past weekend. We were able to pull it off. But our defense allowed them to get a foot into the game. Honestly, a few more minutes on the clock, we could have been having a different conversation, but we're not. So we them boys, um, I wish, you know, one of the games could end in a tie. We didn't pick that one to talk about, but I'm just hoping that both teams lose. Breaking news. How y'all... Hi, Joe Holloway just committed to Grumman State University, transfer from UCLA. He going- He's going to Grambling. Oh. Four star quarterback who was at uh, UCLA is now transferred to Grambling State University. Oh, was that one of the ones that he made the offer to on Friday? Yep. Okay. So Grambling got another question. Final thoughts. All HBCUs, pay attention what going on this weekend. Take this man momentum. We have to really put our hands on Coach Primetime because what he's doing, look at what this man is doing and see the potential that your school can have. I'm not saying we could all need to go get Primetimes and Ray Lewis and Aries, but what if you just put the resources behind the person that you've got? And I'm not talking about just in football. I'm talking about in all sports. What if you just put something behind it? The impact that you can have. This man literally only been at Jackson State one year. Mm -hmm. And look at the money that he's brought in. $10 million to a city. I think it's over 10 million. We're going to say 10 plus million. The resources. This is in the business was like, we're all feeling the prime time effect. Like, they was like, you built it, they will come. The people are literally coming in. The people and they, will come. 
thankful because after COVID, they needed that boost to the economy. Even Mississippi Valley gets a couple of recruits after prime time. I'm mentioning this man named the coach. Like HBCUs, pay attention. Right now, we have the driver's seat. Don't get complacent. Please, I hope if it's some old folks there, fire them. Get these people in and these young people who can bring that youth in them. Or bring somebody who can bring some uh, uh, enthusiasm into the HBCU, not just the athletic program, but the school. Pay attention to what's going on. That's my final thoughts. Um, Just to piggyback off of what you said, I don't want you guys just to be thinking like of what's going on on the field. We need to all tune in to that game on Saturday. I'll be traveling, but I have my iPad with me. We need to make sure the stadium is already sold out. So but they also look at viewers from home. Let's make this the highest ranking game. We tune in every week, and everybody knows that I'm an Alabama fan. I'm consistently tuning in to watch Bama play. We need to get that same energy back to our HBCUs. We not we need to stop treating our schools as if they're insignificant when they are on TV. I don't give a damn if they on your local university channel. You still need to tune in and watch them. If they're on ESPN three or ESPNU, whatever it may be, we need to drive those ratings up so that we can get better time slots. So I challenge everybody to Saturday tune in. Let's make the celebration bowl. It's, it's not going to be the number one, but it will be top five. The Orange Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, and the National Football. Oh, it could be top four. The college football uh, national championship game. Those games, we already know. Well, we and know Bama make- and Georgia. Yeah, we that's know- what I'm saying. The Orange Bowl and Cotton Bowl and the national championship game, we ain't finna tell you. We're we not going to get close. But the celebration bowl can be the top five bowl with viewers watch this bowl season. Let's make that happen. Zo, we hope you feel better and get uh, ready for our next one. That's Mo. I'm Florida. This is HS Sports. We out. When I was a kid, 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 I was a kid